your project. Every 60 seconds in America, a minute goes by. <laughs> For every one minute, there are 59 others just waiting to form an hour. By the time this sentence is over, I will have finished saying it. Is prevention possible? What about our children? Can children be prevented? How much is too little? When is not enough? Luckily, there's hope and answers and more hope. Find out what you can do today to find out what you can do tomorrow to remember what you found out the day before, before it's <laughs> too late. <laughs> What was the message behind that public service announcement? You probably couldn't tell. That's because it was a bad public service announcement. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arthliosclerosis. <laughs> Remember, when delivering a public service announcement, think of the five C's of public service announcing. Clarity, claritas, the irregular verb claritatum, clitoris, <laughs> and claritin. <laughs> Possible side effects include masturbation, oral interpretation, loss of grandparents, and everything that Claritin is supposed to take care of. <laughs> Ask your doctor if Claritin is right for you. Or for me, I'm too lazy to go to the doctor myself. <laughs> now that was an extremely convoluted public service announcement about public service announcements. Hi, I'm. Are you or somebody you know a public service announcer? If so, give me a call. I'm putting something together for, you know, late uh, November, early December. It's going to be a pretty cool event. I'm going to try to get together a bunch of local public service announcers so we can really get the word out about public service announcements. I'm going to talk to the guys down at the uh, ODC Theater. I love that place. Really cool, like, dance floor area, you know. There's the theater. I really like it. It's not a fucking comedy club, you know, because there's no fucking brick wall behind me and the goddamn chicken wing smell and the two-drink minimum horse shit. You know what I'm talking about? The kind of fucking, there's a marquee outside as seen on TV like it takes any fucking effort to be on TV nowadays. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? You know? You know these places, like they're half filled with tourists and half filled with those Marin types, you know? <laughs> Do you guys know what a Marin type is? Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't actually have to be from Marin to be a Marin type. Marin is more like a state of mind. <laughs> and, uh, you know, anybody can really get it, actually. You just have to pick out the prettiest scarf that you can find at the Sausalito Street Fair. <laughs> and then get your hand on some nice wooden jewelry. <laughs> And these people always come up to me after a show and they say something like this. Well, that was very... a lot of different... different sort of... a lot of. <laughs> We're from Marin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. down to the city every now and then see a show. We saw that this was a show. We saw this show. So yeah. Now, how long have you been doing this? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I know it's not easy. I have a son who moved to New York a few years ago to become an actress, and he's, <laughs> he's kind of struggling, so I know it's hard if you're an artist. But now, do you do all the writing and the reading, and can you spell your own name? Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I know it's not easy. I have a brother who moved to Los Angeles to become an idiot. You know? <laughs> He's pretty stupid now, but it took him a long time living down there just to get mildly retarded, so I know it's hard. <laughs> now, where do you usually do your... <sighs> 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 not easy. I have a husband who moved downstairs a few months ago to get away from me, and he shot himself. <laughs> well, anyway, good luck with it. <laughs> Mainstream pedestrian banality affects us all. Do what you can to stop it. Call today for a free brochure. How many times have we heard that phrase? Call today for a free brochure. Or what about this one? Brochures are available. What about this little guy? Pick up a brochure. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But the sad truth is, each day in America, over 500,000 brochures go unchecked. <laughs> Governor Schwarzenegger claims he cares about California's brochure makers and wants California residents to pick up more brochures. So why did he recently approve a bill for Stanford scientists to develop a brochure that picks itself up? <laughs> 
If you want to find out what you can do to pick up a brochure, or pick up a brochure and see if picking up a brochure is right for you. <laughs> Please, Governor Schwarzenegger, stop being a fucking asshole. <laughs> If you've already stopped being a fucking asshole by the time this airs, please forgive me. But if you are still being a fucking asshole, please stop. California's brochure makers need you. Really bad. Every inch of you. Do you like hot, wet, drippy pussies? Are you ready for the most fucktastic, cum-filled night of your life? How would you like to jizz all over your cum? <laughs> if you like hot girl-on-girl -girl dominatrix action, then come to the Berkeley Center for Cultural Expression this Saturday. <laughs> Berkeley Feminist Council is presenting a week-long study, Subverting the Patriarchy, Restoring Female Sexuality to the Female Body, <laughs> featuring poetry and burlesque performance art by some of the Bay Area's most shameless, incest-surviving, sexually abused whores, <laughs> who will do just about anything to get your dick hard and pointy, and reawaken women to themselves as sexual creatures. If you like the loose, drippy pussy lips and strap-on dildo titty-fucking, this is the seminar for you. <laughs> it's time for women to speak out and spread those legs and expose those yearning, quaking pussies in the spirit of feminine liberation. <laughs> Stop the objectification of women and take part in this important seminar that'll show you how to finger fuck yourself into cum shooting oblivion. It's all girl on girl action in the name of fucking and sucking and awakening women to themselves as fuckable cum filled orcs as possessors. <laughs> if you like to fuck or you like to be fucked, then come to the Berkeley Center for Cultural Expression this <laughs> Anybody here ever been to, heard of, or ran away from Berkeley? <laughs> I actually spent some time in Berkeley. Uh, one of the things that makes Berkeley so diverse is all the diversity there. And um, <laughs> when I used to live there, people would say, how do you get so diverse? Well, here's how we get diverse, and I'd like to share that with you. And some of you might have seen this before, but it's a little treat that I love for good audiences like yourself. Um, it's an invocation or a prayer, and by the time we're done with this, we're going to leave here like human rainbows. It's going to be beautiful. So if I could ask everybody to please stretch their hands out to the sky without hurting your neighbor. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. And um, guys, in order to make this work, what we're going to have to do is draw upon that shared 116th Navajo that's within each and every one of us. Dredge deep, guys, because it's there. And then you just change your voice ever so slightly and just repeat after me. Oh, great and wonderful Earth God, Mother, Father. You who have no gender, race, or sexual orientation. You who have no gender, race, or sexual orientation. All multicultural and diverse entity. All nondescript and intangible being. Please help us to be more nonspecific. story so macabre it will leave you on the edge of your seat. The case of the murdered Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a carpenter by day, magician by night. Did his tricks go too far? Far enough for murder. Pontius <laughs> Pilate claims that Jesus was born like this. Oh, but the Virgin Mary disagrees. Was it genetic defect or was it murder? <laughs> the local Jews claim Jesus tripped on a roller skate, fell down a flight of stairs, landed in this position when a bucket of nails dropped from overhead. <laughs> a common household accident or was it murder? By 
find out tonight. I understand what you're saying, Mr. Judas. What I can't comprehend is how Jesus went from the conservatory with Colonel Mustard to the old rugged cross on the hill. <laughs> the Holy Bible claims it was meant to happen this way. Was it biblical prophecy or was it? Messiahs, and we're always glad when you do choose Christ. <laughs> well, our current altitude is uh, six feet above the stage, and in just a few moments we'll be landing on the right forearm. Uh, current time and temperature of the right forearm is the same as it is here, and oh my God! What kind of God would do this to himself? Which is why I wrote this song. No. I don't like classical music, really. The only type of music I get into is jazz, baby. <laughs> that was Crucy Fix, one of five nominees tonight for best use of an artifact of superstition. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, before we leave here tonight, it is time to present the annual award for best quilt, blanket, or other piece of cloth sewn in the name of social justice. We have two nominees tonight. The first nominee is Jeremy Spencer for the sexually transmitted disease quilt. Jeremy? <laughs> wow, hi. Uh, real quickly, the whole story behind the sexually transmitted disease quilt, or STD quilt. Um, we wanted to make a quilt that was much more inclusive than quilts in the past had been. Um, I know a lot of people felt left out with the AIDS quilt. Um, I, I have had a lot of friends who have had herpes, gonorrhea, uh, chlamydia, genital warts, crabs, scabies, and they were saying, hey, where's our quilt? <laughs> We get cold, too. Uh, real quickly, I just have to say thank you to the hundreds, literally hundreds of starving Filipino girls who sewed the quilt who had it right in time. Sadly, there can be only one winner, and tonight's winner is Cody Montana for the homophobia quilt. Uh, the, uh, our whole purpose in making the homophobia quilt was to uh, let people know who we are as a homophobic community uh, and to raise issues of homophobia awareness. Because uh, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there that know what it's like to be a homophobe. Uh, a lot of people think people choose to be homophobes. Uh, hey, fuck, man, I was born a homophobe. All right? uh, I was born intolerant, I was born prejudiced, and I just think it's a fucking shame and a goddamn travesty that we had to do something gay like sew a quilt to prove our point. <laughs> show at the marsh if you're interested I would like to hand them out to you and now uh, here please welcome back our lifetime achievement award winner for best variety show Steve Murray <laughs>